So let us start on SQL today. So SQL stands for Structured Query Language. So this is probably the most famous term for databases, many people by database understands what SQL is, means they probably a layman understands database as SQL. So SQL is almost synonymous to databases and we will go over SQL in some depth. Uh, so SQL, so start off with what is SQL? As you can see it's a language, fine, but it's a language to specify queries in a structured manner. Now for this, what is a structured manner? This is a relational data model. So this has to be a relational data. So it is, so SQL is a language to specify queries in a relational database. So that is the, what is about SQL. It is also what is called a data manipulation language, data manipulation language because this lets one manipulate or update values in a database. So this is called a data manipulation language as well as this is also a data definition language. So it allows to define how the data is structured in a, a relational database. So when this is both. SQL is based upon relational algebra as we already have said and uh, SQL has many, 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 many versions currently. So when before, when it was first incepted, after that there has been many, many versions. Many of them are non-standard. So different vendors which provide SQL and so MySQL, there are many other options and Postgres, SQL, all those things. They, uh, they, so there are differences between them. There are some non-standard operators that are provided by some of those uh, uh, vendors or systems, not by the others. What we will try to do is we'll stick to the basic versions of SQL as far as possible. And one very, very important thing about SQL, which is a big uh, departure from languages such as C or Java, is that this is a declarative language. Now, what does a declarative language mean? A declarative language means, this is not a procedural language, this is a declarative language. So a declarative language essentially means is that it lets you declare what you want to do. So for example, in even a relational algebra, we just said uh, select every tuple where the value of the attribute column A is 1. But it does not tell you how to select those. So should you go over the tuples one by one? Should you look at their attribute values? Or should you hash those attribute values? How it is being done, that is not said. Similarly in SQL, it is not specified how to do it. It is only specified what to do it. So you just declare the intent, you just declare what the query is supposed to be doing what it is supposed to be returning and not how it is being done. C for example, you must specify each and everything. So suppose there is a table which is a relation and you are trying to manipulate it in C. So you must say you go to the first element, go to the first attribute of it, check it with one. If yes, you output it. If not, you go to the second and so on and so forth. So it must be specified in very minute detail. In SQL, it is not done. So a question comes is then how it is being actually uh, performed. So the database engine is very powerful actually. So when you write an SQL query, it first parses it, then it figures out, it has got its internal algorithms and it tries to select an algorithm which will be the best for that uh, particular query. So then it applies that algorithm, finds the answer and returns it. So now the what is, so this is a very nice feature of SQL. This is, a, this is an advantage of SQL. Now this has got a con side as well. The disadvantage is that even if you know that a particular algorithm is not good or if you want to apply a particular algorithm for a query, it, the database engine does not let you do so. It will take over. So you cannot say I want the answer of this query in this manner. You are completely at the mercy of the database engine. Having said that, in most cases the database engine is quite smart and there are lots of research that has gone into it and going into it every day and they are they do a very very good job in real life all right so let us start off with some examples of sql and uh, so the first thing is how to create a relational schema so how do you create creating a schema so the 
way to create is that there is a create table construct. So the create table, you say create table, then the specify the parameters in this manner, a1, d1, c1, then some a n, d n, c n, then some constraints. All right, so let me go over this, what does it mean? So this construct says that, okay, create a table with the name R, fine. The first attribute of which is called A1, whose domain is D1, and the constraint, if there is any, is C1 on that particular attribute. And it lets you create in such, so you can create whatever number of attributes that you want as part of this R. In the end, you can also specify certain integrity constraints, some other kinds of constraints, if there are any on each of these attributes. So you can say there is an integrity constant 1 on this, there is an integrity constant 2 on this, etc., etc., etc. So this is the way to create a table. For example, if we just take an example from the earlier banking examples that we were doing, what does this mean? It means create a table branch, the first attribute of which is called a branch name. This is a character up to, this can go up to 20 length, and this is the primary key of this table. Then you create another attribute which is called branch city, which is again a character which can go, I mean this is a string which can, whose length can go up to 30. And that's it. That's about create table. So now let us discuss a little bit about the data types that you have. So the data types in SQL. So the data types is, we already saw one example. So the first is a character n. This is a string whose length is exactly equal to n. As opposed to a var char, so this is actually you can read it as variable character n. So this is a string whose length can go up to n, not necessarily exactly equal to n, but can go up to n. Then you can say it is an integer or sometimes you can also specify it as int. So it's simple, this is an integer, then you can specify a small integer. So this is a small integer, just like this is a short in C. So it's an integer, but it takes less an amount of space to store. You can say it's a real, so it's a real number. You can say it's a double precision real. So you can say it's a double precision. So essentially it means it's a real number, but with a higher precision. You can say it's a float with some precision D, so the float will have at least D digits. And finally, you can say it's a numeric So this is a floating point number with a total of A digits of which D is after the decimal point. So this is the total and this is after decimal point, after decimal point. So these are these, and it's actually a little painful to go over all the syntax and all the data types of SQL. A good standard textbook or the SQL manual will be probably a better way to look at this. So these are the basic data types, but it doesn't end here. There are many other data types in the newer versions of SQL, which makes it much more powerful. So the first one is date. So it is specifies a date. Now this is important because a date can be in the month, uh, year, day format, etc. It lets you compare the two dates, take the difference, and all of this. Similarly, there is a time. Then there is a date time which is a combination of these two. So which is actually sometimes called timestamp. So on and so forth. Then there is, you can also specify the time in terms of interval. So this is a time interval. So all these, these are different things that enhances the power of the data types. In addition, SQL also lets one create user defined data types. So one can create their own data types. For example, you can say create type, let us say CGPA as 
numeric. So, it is just like a type definition. So, you are saying well, so every CGPA must be of three digits, at most three digits with one digit after the thing. It is just a type name for this creating. But more importantly, it also for, for storing large objects, it also lets create something called a blob. So, this stands for binary large object. So, for example, if you want to store an image, etc., in an SQL table, you can store it as a blob. And similarly, there is something called a clob, which is character large object. So, it store a document, etc., it can be stored as a character document. So, essentially, these are not stored uh, inside the table, they are pointed to these uh, objects are stored. So, that is about the data types. Now, let us go over a little bit about the constraints that can be done in SQL. So, you can specify constraints saying it something can be said as not null. So, a particular attribute can be said as not null. So, whenever a new tuple is inserted, the attribute cannot be null. Similarly, we have already seen an example of primary key. You can specify what the primary key is. You can specify the default value. So, if nothing is specified, the default value takes over. You can specify whether it is unique or not. So, when you say primary key, of course, it is unique, but not the other way around. You can say you must make it unique. The fifth is probably very important. The fifth is important. It is called a foreign key. So, you can specify that this attribute is a foreign key to some other attribute. And then you can also say check P. So, this is like a domain constant. So, you check if the predicate P is satisfied or not. So, something uh, what we can do is an example of maybe the foreign key constant because this is important is that you can say foreign key for a particular uh, thing such as let us say C name in some table. You can say this references the customer table. So, if, if such a definition is inside a table that means the attribute C name in this table references the primary key, references the customer table, which means of course that it references the primary key of the customer table. So, this can be specified. Question comes is table can be created, can it be modified or can it be deleted? Of course, it can be deleted and the deletion is simply drop table. So, you can simply say for example, drop table whatever borrower, I mean, say, let us say you can drop a particular table you can also update a table, the, the syntax is alter table and essentially what you can do is you can say alter table r, then you can say for example, add. So, I, I want to add uh, attribute a with domain constant d and constant c to this table, that can be done. You can also say alter table R drop a particular attribute A from this. And again, lots of other things can be done, etc., etc., but it is better to check up the manual. So, this is about the part of the data definition language that we talked about, how the table structure is defined. It is essentially just defining the table structure and not doing, uh, not defining about any data, etc. So, we will see about the insertion, deletion, etc., into the data later. But let us first go to why SQL is famous for, SQL is famous for this basic query structure.